Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is a look at my survival training packing list layout. Stand by. First things first, I want to say a very happy Veterans Day to all of my fellow service members out there, past and present, and then to all the families that may have service members still in the service or have supported military service members uh, in the past. And I want to say a very happy Veterans Day to you guys. Thank you guys for everything that you do for me and for our fellow service members and for the military and then for our families. We definitely couldn't do our jobs without all the support from our families and from each other. So I want to say a very happy Veterans Day to all of you guys. Okay, so thank you. All right, guys. So now I've got my kit right here in the bag that I'm going to take to the survival training at the end of the month. The survival training I'm going to is an intermediate course designed to teach students uh, the uh, more advanced methods of survival to prepare for an advanced course and then to help master the basics uh, taught in subsequent courses. And so this is going to be kind of a, a uh, stepping stone for instruction and then for a learning environment and then it will prepare me for an advanced course in the springtime. Now I've got my kit here. The kit and the prescribed items on the packing list are very robust in my opinion. They uh, are designed to help teach students more primitive methods and then to help prepare them obviously for another course. Now let's go over this bag really quick. This is my Malice Pack. This is not general issue. I got this from Tactical Taylor a long time ago. I've used this bag for almost a decade now. And you can see that it's shaped like a traditional Alice Pack, but it's called a Malice Pack. And it's called that because of all the compartments that I have on the exterior of the rucksack and then attachment points where I can attach my e-tool, I can attach two cord, I can attach mission essential equipment. It's got a lot of pouches on it for the purposes of getting to mission essential equipment very quickly in the field. And so I'm going to have items that, are, that I need readily available in these exterior pockets that you guys can see. And then in the internal main compartment, I'll have most of my shelter items and then larger items I'm unable to fit in these uh, exterior pockets. But this rucksack I've had for about a decade, I have done long road marches with this. I've survived out of this. I've used it in different survival courses. I've jumped this thing out of an aircraft quite a few times and then landed it. And it is old faithful, very durable. And you can see it's very well worn and very used. On the back you guys can see I have a very thick rucksack frame with my kidney pads and then shoulder straps. This rucksack empty weighs approximately five pounds or so so it's kind of heavier but I've used this before. I've trained with it a lot and I'm confident in my physical abilities to carry this plus the kit and to be able to carry it over distance four times. Let's take a look inside the rucksack and I'll show you guys the items that I'm going to take into that survival training. Alright guys, so the first two items that are going to be prescribed in the packing list are going to be a knife and then an axe. Now, the knife has to meet certain requirements. The Moore Garber will meet those requirements. The blade itself needs to be a full tang, which the Moore Garber is. And then high carbon steel. This blade is high carbon steel. It needs to have approximately four inches or greater of cutting surface, which this does and then a 90 degree spine on the back to meet course requirements. So with this knife being full tang, it can take a lot of abuse. And you guys have seen me use it before in other videos. The 90 degree spine on the back so I can strike sparks or make shavings with fat wood. And then the 1095 high carbon steel so that I can take a piece of shirt or flint and strike sparks off the back of my knife for fire starting. So this knife right here will meet course requirements and that's what I'm gonna take into the course. So the ax, there are no prescribed 
uh, recommendations or requirements for the axe itself. Here I have just a simple Grants Force Brooks camp axe or hatchet. With this axe, I'll take it into training and the recommendations from other people that have been in the course is that a hatchet is a little bit more serviceable as compared to a smaller forest axe or a smaller type axe. And so I'm going to take this axe or this hatchet into the course with me for wood processing. Next are going to be our fire items. Now, I'm going to have this tin that I'll take into the course to help contain my items. Now, the two items that are prescribed in the, in the actual packing list are going to be some sort of magnification lens, like I have right here. This is a simple five power lens. And then some sort of flint and steel. Here I have just a piece of steel, high carbon steel 1095 as a striker, and then I have a piece of shirt that I've collected over the years that I can take and drive sparks off. So those are the two things that are prescribed for fire starting in the course. With those, I'm going to bring a large ferro rod. This is typically one of the main methods for fire starting. We may end up getting rid of this during the layout. I'll be sorry to see it go, but I'll be able to make fire with the other items in here and then primitive methods. But I'm going to bring this just in case that this was some sort of implied task. And then keeping it in the tin makes it easy for me to find those items and not lose them. Now for cordage, we have an entire roll of number 36 bank line. This is going to be the cordage of the main cordage we use. <clears throat> there is one other piece of cordage in this kit and a later item that I'll show you, but this is going to be our main utility cord and bank line is very durable. I can only assume then that with this bank line we'll be doing a lot of lashing and binding. and using this for friction fire as well as camp craft. But a whole roll of bank line and that will be our cordage. The packing list requires two different container devices, technically three, but the first is gonna be a 32 ounce or one US quart, one liter canteen metal, and then a nesting cup. And so I'm going to use the same canteen and nesting cup that I've always been using. And then a two quart, uh, 64 ounce cooking pot or camp pot like this. And so I'm going to use my solo stove, uh, 64 ounce, two quart metal container for those requirements. So these would be my two containers. All right guys, so we have three different cover items that we need to bring to the course. One is gonna be a six foot by eight foot natural material tarp, which I have right here. This is a cotton tarp that is treated with waterproof material to help make it water resistant in the field. And this is probably the heaviest item in my kit. The next thing we have to have one queen size wool blanket and then one twin size wool blanket. So I have my queen underneath here, queen size wool blanket. And then I've got my old school OD green military wool blanket. This wool blanket is 70% wool and then 30% other material. But I believe these will suffice for the course and they meet the requirements for the course packing list for items for our cover to construct shelter and stay warm at night. Now there are a number of miscellaneous items or additional items that we need to bring to the course. In this outside compartment here, those items is our other piece of quarters. This is 20 feet of natural rope 
material and it needs to be at least 3 8 inch I believe this is 5 8 and then made of natural material 20 feet long so I have my cordage right there which probably used for shelter craft and then for uh, building possibly a Roy Croft pack frame Next we have a compass. The compass needs to have a sighting mirror, which we have up top, and then a magnification lens here with a protractor built in that reads to a one over 100,000th map scale. And so I have that with the MC2 Sunto compass right here. Next we need to have a headlamp. And so I have my Black Diamond 400 lumen headlamp right here for the course to obviously see what we're doing at night uh, around the camp for all the things we're going to be making and having this so I have my headlamp. We need to have cotton material and that cotton needs to be three foot by three foot. What I'm bringing is just a three foot by three foot shemag right here made of 100% cotton. As long as the material is 100% cotton and it is roughly three feet by three feet, it will suffice for course requirements. And so the Shemag meets those requirements. Other items we need to bring that I keep as well in this tin for just the sake of having it secured are going to be one 16 penny nail all right, so it's a three and a half inch nail, and this is for different camp craft, I'm sure for a rope maker and then a few other things uh, for use in camp. So we need to have that. Another item we need to have, which you guys have seen me use before in my kits, it is a 14 gauge sail needle or canvas needle. We can use this needle for a lot of different tasks in camp craft, as well as improvisational tasks. Up top here, another thing we're supposed to have is five sheets of eight and a half by 11 right in the rain paper, which I have right here. I went ahead and got the stuff that has the uh, ability to create grids. So it's got, a, it's got grid lines on it for note taking as well as map making. But I have my writing paper right there. It also calls for five pencils. So I have five pencils right here for the purposes of taking notes. And then in the event I lose pencils, spare batteries for my headlamp. Now, two of the last items that are required for the course, then one of which I put in this two quart pot, which you guys may have seen before, is a buck saw. And the minimum requirement for this buck saw is gonna be 21 inches. This is a 30 inch buck saw which I'm contemplating uh, changing it out for a 21 or 24 inch buck saw blade, just depending on the materials available at the time to construct a buck saw. That's obviously what this is for, and then use for camp craft making other items in camp with a saw. I saw the Last item that we're bringing to the course is a multi-tool. And here you can see I just got the Leatherman Surge. I've gone ahead and traded this out for the Leatherman Super Tool 300 and I've been using this for the past month or so. I like it because it's one-handed opener for a knife and some of the other exterior tools. I like that the tools are on the outside so I don't have to open this thing up all the time, but I still have all the functions of that Leatherman Super Tool 300 with this surge and so I'm going to use this surge and then I'm going to take this into the course and that's the final item for the packing list for the survival training that I'll be attending at the end of the month.
Alright guys, so that was the kit. I hope you liked that. I wanted to show you guys the items that I'm going to be taking into this next survival course. And then the goal of today was to get a little bit of training in myself for the things I think are going to be in the course and some things I definitely know are going to be in the course. Like the bow drill, friction fire set, definitely in the course. Shelter, obviously. Roycroft pack frame, ladder style uh, will probably be in the course, possibly. But the lashings and bindings are good practice. And then the buck saw is definitely going to be in the course being that I have to bring a buck saw blade and so making one of those from scratch just from the materials around me is great training so I hope you guys like that video if you did like that video hit that like button hit that subscribe button leave a comment in the comment section I always appreciate your feedback I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me for the channel I want to thank you guys for your likes your views your subscriptions your comments your feedback and your shares and I'll be back with another video just as soon as I can guys thanks